what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's me, Mikey Pipes, with Peter, and the other Mike. Today, we're gonna finish the Bosch trifecta. That's right. We got the GHB 96, 96% gas-fired Bosch furnace, the Bosch evaporator coil, and the T9900 I. 199 SC. Ah, what a boatload that was to say. So, it is a little after 8.30 in the morning. We're modifying our supply plan right here. As you can see, it's almost perfect. Almost perfect. We have to shorten up these two sides here and the back. And we made that nice. I'll wrap it with some bubble wrap. Giving them a little bit more efficiency there. Maintain the flex right there. It really came out nice. We have to shim out the bottom because the floor is so bad and off, totally off level. And I gave it just a little bit of pitch towards the front. And if you look in the manual, that's what it says to do. All right, so I got a piece of sheet metal set up here and Peter is gonna make a template. Now we could measure with a tape measure, but Peter's learning. We're gonna make a template of the supply plenum left side with a piece of Bosch cardboard. Here's a Sharpie. Okay. okay. You know how this is gonna work, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So there is the piece we need to make, right? And this is the inside, right? So let's take our sharp, just right inside right there. Perfect. Now, we need flanges, correct? We need a flange where? Uh, the left and the right. And anywhere else? And the bottom. And the bottom. All right, so we need to add a half inch to, actually let's make an inch. Let's add an inch to the bottom right and we'll add an inch on both sides so we can do that very relatively easy let's go let's see what's the way to cut this piece without destroying the whole thing let's go how about we go over here all right so let's take our tape measure and let's mark an inch off of here off the sheet metal we're adding we want to add an inch to the sheet metal okay okay put a mark right there good and another one on that side Perfect, so now this bottom piece is gonna line up right there, right? There and there. So now we're gonna add our inch flange to the bottom when we're cutting this, right? Now, we're gonna take our, our knife, we're gonna make this nice sharp line. We'll use the, tape, uh, the, um, the level for that and then we'll add an inch to both sides. So we've added an inch on both sides because we're gonna make one inch flanges and we're not gonna cut the bottom because we're putting a flange there. And remember, this is the inside, right? Yep. So cut along the Sharpie line that we made to cut this piece out. This piece of the jigsaw puzzle. Perfect. How do you think you did? Could have been better. Oh, yeah. All right, well, this is going to go into the slip, so yeah, we could take, take our snips and make that a little more straighter there. Um, but where's our end? This is inside, right? Okay, so let's put this down on a piece of cardboard. Okay, let's grab a the big giant flat screwdriver, and I'm going to grab the level. And we're going to make some scores in this to prevent expansion that banging sound all right so we're going to take our level and remember we got a little flange here a little flange there so i cut out the bottoms because that's where the flange is going to meet so we'll put our level right there on that mark and about an inch from the corner there in this side, that kind of fashion i'm going to take a sharp object probably a big giant flat screwdriver and score just like that we'll do the same thing put it on the other side Right about there, almost right there, so right around there, good. 
do the same thing there. See? Nice. Just like they did at the factory. Okay, now we'll get our flange tool. And which was the inside? Was this the inside? Or was this the inside? I, be I believe this is because that's the you were just. I believe you're 100% sure? Uh, we can go back at the okay. footage. Okay. Right? It went there. Okay. On this, one inch. Right like that, all the way in. Like that. On the other side. Like that. More. Perfect. Now we got to do the bottom. All right. So we were like this. We don't want to go in with it. We want to go out with it. Yeah, that's true. Okay. If you notice, the piece we're bending is a little bit longer than the tool we're using. So we'll bend it evenly at the same time. See? Perfect. And there it is. I had a little bit of overlap there, a little bit. So I just took my uh, ball peen hammer, hammered that down. Now we're gonna put some mastic tape, mastic tape around all the sides. It really, really, really came out nice. Beautiful, beautiful. Perfect. Pete is gonna wrap the return plenum to the furnace, make it look nice and pretty. And we're working on, we finished the gas already actually. And now working on the flue. And now look who's here. Your first service call you want to talk about it? You made a video about it. No, I didn't make a video. Actually, initially I had trouble with it. Cause I couldn't get the boiler to, I, it was on, but I couldn't get that boiler to fire. <laughs> but it has a whole different control. It does different things than the other boiler. Ah, so a little bit of just a little background. A, uh, another local licensed master plumber, very great guy. Um, shout out to Plum Pro. He's in East Rockaway. Danny, great, great guy. But he installed a Whale McLean Evergreen. Evergreen 220. 220 that replaced a Whale McLean Ultra 3 230. And he retained us to do a proper commissioning and startup, which includes. A combustion analysis, dialing down gas valve if necessary, all that good stuff. And the results were? Good. I didn't have to adjust it. Perfect. Nine, Tits. It's supposed to be 9.25 <laughs> plus or minus 0.5. Is that 9.46? Perfect. 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 Excellent. And we printed the results from the Testo uh, combustion analyzer, put in a little pouch. Right, you didn't brand our name all over everything. Yeah. Good, okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want to. Do we don't want to encrouch. You don't want to steal someone else's customer, especially. She want us to clean the dryer vent, though. Oh, very good. So uh, we can schedule that. Perfect. Because Danny does not do dryer vent cleaning. At least not that I'm aware of. If you are, you're gonna watch this video and let me know if you want to take care of it or not, or you want Mikey pipes to clean her dryer vent. Because you should clean your dryer vents every year, if not more, depend on usage. Prevent right, forest fires. Or comfort control. The Bosch BCC 100. I got common is blue. Y1. Sorry, W1 is white. Y1 is yellow. RCRH, the little jumper right there, is red. G for fan control is green. W2, I mean black. Y2, orange. And then OB, should the time ever come, is brown. I missed the top. There we go. There we go. Very nice. Nice, nice, nice thermostat. All right, we are registered with the thermostat. So let's review. Fossil fuel, good, complete. System is off. It's updating from the cloud. Let's go to menu. 
let's go to mode, let's do heat, and okay. Good, let's raise up the temperature. All right, so okay. here we are. We're in the cleaning up process. There's our condensate pump with built-in neutralizer. We have that discharging into the standpipe. You turn the gas on. Yes, the gas is on. So we have one is coming down, three quarter reducing coupling, and then teeth to the water heater, teeth to the Bosch. And Houston, we have ignition. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. We have to do a combustion analysis. And then we'll do to total static pressure. Static pressure. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Since they call me an influencer, I gotta step up my game. And we're gonna do total static pressure measurement. Watch this. Here's the back side of the furnace. Right now we're gonna check after the heat exchanger and before the coil. And then we're gonna see what kind of pressure drop we have between the evaporator coil. I got my Testo 510. And right now we have 0.53 inches of water column, positive pressure, right? And then we're gonna see what it is coming out of it. All right, coming out of it, it's the negative side, right? So let's hook up and see what we get. We're now gonna see that our pressure after the evaporator is 0.23. So we lost a half an inch of water column of static pressure across a brand new coil. We're on the return plenum. And I'm at 0.43, 0.4, 0.43, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 
they're in Ontario, Canada, and they produce great stickers just like this, right? Check them out. There's information in the description box down below. Highly recommend it. I know a couple dozen contractors already bought these stickers and they absolutely love them. So check them out. There's details in the description box down below. Let them know that Mikey Pipe sent you from Pipe Doc. All right, one thing left to do. If you ain't testing, you're a guest. So let's just put you right there. Look at that. Perfect, perfect relationship. Look at that. There's the IDS 2.0 condenser, which he's going to get one day. But isn't beautiful Bosch evaporator coil? stickers email me mike at mikeypipes.com all right ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed this video of part two oil to gas conversion featuring bosch the trifecta technically will be complete when we install the ids 2.0 heat pump condenser at a later date but for now the conversion is complete and the only thing left to do is uh get some inspections and then uh, call it a day I hope you enjoyed. Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comments section down below. A little rusty when it comes to, uh, keeping it real, a little rusty when it comes to uh, static pressure measurements and total static pressure measurements, but like I said, keeping it real. Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comments section down below. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be well, God bless, stay safe.